G'day guys, um, it's Dr. James Simcock here and I'm just going to do a short story for you guys, um, for our YouTube members, um, on how I plan a TPLO. So we've got a TPLO that I'm going to take to surgery in a few minutes time, we'll actually live stream this surgery. Um, I'm down in our Mornington Hospital today and our technological um, prowess down here is not quite what we have up at Moravin. So I'm not going to film the scope, just going to film the procedure, but that'll be up there later. So. I thought I'd just go through the planning of the TPLO just to kind of brush up on um, what we're doing and just remind you guys of, of how we do that, what the landmarks are. Um, just before I get there, just a huge thank you to our YouTube members. Um, we really enjoy producing this content for you guys and really thank you for signing up and, and kind of checking out what we've got going on. Um, the aim is to try and produce a lot of content that is you know, useful, um, interactive, um, just gives you a bit of an insight into what we're doing. A lot of clinical stuff, but a little bit of behind the scenes stuff as well. So. What we're using here is a program called VPOP Pro, and this is a orthopedic planning software um, developed by a guy called Roy Patton in the, US, uh, sorry, in the UK. He's a really, really great surgeon, um, really nice guy, and this software is freaking awesome. Um, I use it now for all of my TPO planning. I wish this was around when um, I started doing TPOs about 15 years ago. So just to um, Kind of get you started. What we need to do first of all is we've got our lateral x-rays. Um, first we want to look for is that we've got a nice straight lateral x-ray. So the femoral condyles are superimposed. We can see this dog has got a reasonably good amount of effusion in this knee, um, but um, we've got a little bit of arthritis, not a lot of secondary arthritic change there. Um, what we're looking for specifically is superimposition of the femoral condyles. That tells us that the, the femur at least is straight. And then what we're looking for here is that we want to see the intercondylar eminences just here. We can see that we've got the tibial plateau here we can see this little dip at the front sometimes it gets filled in the osteophytes and on this x-ray we've also got the hock in here we've taken this x-ray in approximately 90 degrees of stifle flexion <clears throat> and 90 degrees of hock flexion so in doing that it helps to get the positioning nice and straight um, so once we've done that we want to actually calibrate this image um, because we're going to be templating and, and putting implants on here so to calibrate the image we actually um, so i'm just going to move the camera a little bit um, so i can see what i'm doing myself um, we're going to bring our uh, calibration tool down here onto our uh, radiographic markers and I'm just going from the bottom of one ball to the bottom of the other ball. I know that distance is 10 centimetres so we can select 10 here, hit calibrate image and now that image is calibrated. The next thing we're going to do is to measure our um, tibial plateau angle and the way we do that is we put our um, anatomic axis on first and that runs from the intercondylar eminences up here down to um, the center of the talus just at this point here and that is the first line we put in the second line we put in actually represents the um, tibial plateau surface so we'll come up here to measure again you can see this automatically drops the line on here with an angle of five degrees um, the way that Rory describes measuring this and, and planning this out is a bit different to the way I do it but um, both of them make sense and achieve the same goal this is really nice because once we put this second line on here, it gives me the angles of intersection here. Um, and if I click on that, I can actually change it from 123. We can change it to this angle here, which is kind of more relevant to what we're looking at. Because remember, we're going to have 90 degrees minus 56.8, and that's going to be kind of roughly what our angle is. And as I change, whoops, as I actually click on here and I change this and, and get this top line um, oriented with the, the joint surface, we can see that that actually changes accordingly. So we'll round that up to about say um, 58 degrees and then I know that um, 90 minus 58 is going to be 32. So my tibial plateau angle for this case is going to be 32 degrees. And the um, landmarks for this are really this little indentation up here where the tibial plateau runs out and then kind of ends. That's the cranial landmark. And then I kind of look at this um, line here of sclerosis. It gives you a little bit of a curvature and look at this line of best fit, how, the, how it comes out to the caudal aspect of the tibial plateau. And that's basically where we're going to end up measuring back here. Um, you can see that that's where that, those, um, con, the tibial condyles kind of, um, kind of stop just about there. You also need to know that the um, popliteus sesamoid is just underneath it. So again, about 58 degrees um, is what we're looking at. So 32 degrees is going to be our actual um, tibial plateau angle that we're going to be talking about in the surgery. The next thing we can do, and this is really nice in this program, is actually um, take one of the other tools. So we're going to take a crescentric saw and we're actually going to move this up and decide what saw blade we're going to use. So 
This is starting off with a 15 blade by default and I can adjust up to whatever we need to adjust down to 9.5 or 8. So this dog is going to be probably around about maybe a 27 blade. It's a pretty big dog. I'm just going to move this down. I might even zoom in here a little bit so you can see. Whoops. Ah, what's happened? I'll zoom back out again. Okay, so there we go. So you can see that nicely there now. I can get my saw and I can move this around and I want the center of rotation of the saw to be pretty much on the intercontinental eminences um, where we were measuring our mechanical axis. The second thing I'm going to do is then look at, um, I'm just going to rotate this around so it's a bit straighter as well. We're going to look at um, where the saw actually is going to sit and the saw takes up 90 degrees of um, 360 degree circle. And really where we want this sort of go, I'm just gonna look at whether we could back this down to a 24 blade. So 24 blade is probably gonna be okay. I might go up to a 27 blade. And what I'm looking for specifically is I wanna have enough width in this tibial crest. And I wanna have the shape of this tibial crest as a trapezoid shape. So it's wider at the base than it is at the apex here. Um, I'm actually just gonna move this um, where I'm centered it just a little bit core and a little bit proximal, just to kind of optimize exactly where it's gonna go. And that little amount of movement here, as long as we're within a couple of millimeters of these intercontinental eminences in this region here, um, it's really gonna not make too much difference. And then we'll measure up and work out our D1, D2, and D3 uh, measurements. So when I'm in surgery, I can actually execute um, this plan that we're establishing. Um, but at the moment, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. We've got a, a nice shape to the tibial crest. Um, we've got the long digital extensor tendon is gonna be running down here. We've got the um, sclerotic region here where the, um, the patella actually inserts just on this section just here and so we want that saw blade to be exiting in this region right there. So you've always got a little bit of kind of decisions to make here whether you're going to go like a 24 blade, you know, is that going to be a little bit small, um, you know, it'll probably be okay but I think we can push up into a 27 blade. Um, this dog is a um, Belgian Shepherd so it's a pretty big dog. So from here, now we can hit start cutting and what that does is allow us to kind of trace out a section that we want to actually cut with the um, tool that we have here. I can hit done and then now we can actually rotate this proximal segment around and we can see as I rotate this, this number here, this rotation number changes. So we're going to go down to about 32, sorry, 30 degrees or 32 degrees um, and that's about here and now we can see that our tibial plateau angle is actually leveled out quite nicely. You'll notice here that I am actually rotating this point past the um, theoretical safe point. Um, I don't really worry too much about this kind of safe point in most cases, providing that we've got a sufficiently large tibial crest and I don't put my anti-rotational pin below the, the tibial tuberosity right here, um, then we should be completely fine with um, rotating past that theoretical kind of safe point. The other thing we're going to do then is measure so I can actually know where I'm going to place the saw in surgery. I'm going to measure um, a couple of different lines here. So I think this is the one I've just pulled up. Oops. And I'm going to measure this distance here, which is D2. So I've got 14 millimeters and I'm going to um, put another line in here, uh, another measurement. So we're going to go from here kind of straight across um, and that's going to be 12 millimeters. So I want that to be at least 10 millimeters um, and 12 should be more than fine in this case. And then we're going to go one more um, and this one here is going to go from kind of just the in the region of the kind of caudal aspect of the medial collateral ligament down to where we make our cut. And that one in there is 25.9 millimeters. So based on that, we know where um, we want to put our saw in surgery. I can have landmarks I can see in the surgery and I can place the saw very accurately where it needs to go. The final thing I'm going to do is then take um, an implant. So I was just measuring up a total hip replacement earlier. So I'm going to change here to VOI. This is nice because we've got all these different templates, heaps of different um, implant choices. We're going to come to VOI. We're going to hit um, TPLO for the type of implant that we want. We're going to go to the um, elite plate, which is what we use. Um, and then I can select right or left. Um, this is a 2.7 millimeter broad, which can be way too small. We're going to be more like looking at a 3.5 broad plate and that is going to work pretty nicely for us. So, um, we can see that all my screws are in engaged in the, um, in the appropriate part of the bone. We're not going to be going through the cortical bone here um, in the cranial um, kind of uh, diaphysis. And we can see all of our screws are going to be nicely located within this proximal segment. Should be print, uh, you know, plenty of distance between.